everybody, Scalcraft here again. It's Wednesday. Please excuse the fact I might look a little funky today as I have uh, contracted poison ivy again for the, probably the sixth time this year. <laughs> I just get it like every other month. It's always, but this one's pretty bad. I mean, it's it's all over my uh, my face and my, <laughs> I got swollen parts. It's just rough. I get it all the time. And I know I've been dealing with poison ivy my whole life. It's just sometimes I think the cats rub against it and bring it to me. I stay away from it in the, the backyard, but it, it comes to me. It finds me. Anyway, we got a big show today. Lots of little subjects to get to. You know, my last uh, episode we talked about, I said, if you could pick one tool other than a machete to go on a deserted island, what would it be? And wow, what a good response we had. A lot of people had some interesting uh, tool picks, but I was shocked how many Leatherman tools were picked. And you know, Leatherman is one of those tools that's, uh, and there's a lot of opinionated guys with the Leathermans, you know, which ones they like or don't like, whatever. But the case is, you got to admit, it's a fantastic company, uh, well-made tools. They're a little bit heavy to carry every day and whatnot, you know, on your belt and things like that. But they are fantastic tools and they're just fun to play with. And let me show you a couple here. I, I have a good collection of Leatherman, but I have them scattered because I use them for different things. But I picked a couple up. Let me show you some that I think you might be interested okay, in. Okay, now here are just a few of the ones I used to carry. I used to like to carry different ones to work and things like that. And um, now this is the kind of things you could buy if you're not blowing all your money on cannabis. <laughs> anyway, you know what I'm talking about. This is why, as a kid, I never got into drugs. I was too busy buying cool stuff. There's so much cool stuff out there. you you got to want one of these. Uh, so anyway, we start off, we got the... You know, the Leatherman Micro or Micra, and uh, this one here has a, a scissor type uh, cutter on here, and it's spring loaded, which is nice. But these scissors do come in handy every once in a while, and it has a lot of the other attachments. I'm not going to go through them, but uh, all of them. But uh, this one's a small one you could carry in your pocket, which is fairly nice. Um, this one here, I'm not crazy about the sheath. It's a, it's made in Mexico, the sheath, but the uh, the tool itself is made. This is called the Leatherman Crunch. You can see here the crunch. And what this is, this is a uh, almost like a, a vice grip, okay? And uh, you pull this open like this, put this in here like this, and you can see it, it works as a vice grip. And you would uh, attach the bottom, uh, close and open the bottom, just like a vice grip would. And it has some other tools in the back here. That One thing I like about Leatherman is they make the tools that they are accessible. A lot of the early Leathermans were hard to get the tools out of uh, the tool itself. And now this, the new one that they have, the, uh, the P4 Wave or something, that's supposed to be really good as far as opening one-handed, which is nice. Uh, this one here, you can see here, it's called the uh, Surge. Okay, and uh, a beefy tool, very heavy. Again, you know, they're heavy tools, but this, a one-handed open, a very sharp blade. You know, the, the steel on them is very good. It's got the little lock here to, uh, to lock and close. And again, to open the tool, you can't do it one-handed, you know, unless you use your pant pocket or something. But you could see here, it has a... Uh, a uh, really nice fit and finish on, and that was just a little bit of oil that comes through the uh, the grip, and it's adjustable. Uh, if you ever had to service the tool, they they do have a, a very good warranty system on these. But this one here, you could see again, you could pull everything out with the. Uh, uh, your, your nail, your fingernail or something, and it has the attachments here. And there's, I'll show you over here, because in the back here, there's some attachments like these diamond saws that you could put into here, locks in, and uh, you could use it as a, a diamond saw, which is, again, a, a very interesting on how these operate. Uh, they got reviews on every one of these good ones on uh, YouTube. This one here, Again, these are older ones. I'm sure they've changed uh, in the last 20 years. Now, this one here was new when it first came out because this one here, the Wave, had uh, an interesting part in here in the back that you could... Uh, let me find it here because it's been a little... Here it is. You open this up here and there's your attachment that you could put all kinds of accessories. And it came in these little cards here. 
and you can see all these different accessories that would fit in here. Again, I don't know how much of these, uh, and it locks really nice. You know, it's super strong as far as the way it locks. I don't know how much of these accessories will come in on a deserted island. <laughs> Unless maybe you found a uh, an old radio that you wanted to or repair or something. You know, that might help on something. This is interesting. This is a... Uh, uh, you don't see too many of these anymore, but you know those emergency shears that the uh, EMS uses and stuff? You pull that straight out, and this opens up just like this, and it's very strong. It's got these, you know, strong detents in there, but this is those emergency shears that'll, you know, cut through a penny or whatnot, and very strong. I like the way, it, you know, being a scissor guy, I like the way these folded down and... Uh, and it fit into this cool sheath here, like this, you know, so that you can just pull it out and it doesn't come out. It doesn't fall out. So that's really nice. But the one that I would have to say fit and finish wise that really stands above even leather would be the Victor Knox. You know, the Victor Knox, uh, this is again an old one. I don't even know if they still, man, look at this. You, when you pull this out and you guys that like Swiss Army stuff, you know that Swiss Army makes, you know, terrific stuff. They always have. Look at the fit and finish on this tool. I mean, there is nobody that would look at this tool and say, you know, ah, they kind of threw that together. This is just, when you feel the quality of this tool, it stands above the rest, you know? And again, this is an older one that had, uh, that was done before the other ones, you know? So you, you do have a little bit of issue pulling some of these tools out of here. Um, you know, because of the way it's made, but when it locks into the back here, you see that these little detents here lock everything in and you pull it back and it's just, you could feel the smoothness. This is just a, a tool you love to play with. And I've, I carried this to work many, you know, for years and look at it. It still looks like brand new, just a beautiful, well-made tool, the Victor Knox Swiss tools. So like I said, it says Pat Pending, so... I don't even know if uh, if they still make them today or anything, but it's funny how a lot of you guys chose this type of tool to go along. I, I find that pretty. So if you have a favorite le Leatherman tool, please let us know in the uh, in the comments what your favorite Leatherman tool is and why it is. Because a lot of us might be in into uh, or not have one and want to pick one up. And if by your recommendations, we might go by that. So let me know in the comments what's your favorite Leatherman tool and and why you like it. Uh, next up. Speaking of Leatherman tools, I, you know, I was on my walk. A lot of good stuff being thrown out lately. Let me show you something I picked up last, now, last night. Last night I was walking and there was a nice dresser from, uh, you know, the clothes dresser thrown out. And what a beautiful dresser it was. But uh, it was white and it had these nice, look at these nice draw pulls on here. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the facets on here, you know. I mean, it's obviously, it's a glass or something, but uh, just really nice. And I got, you know... A bunch of them here. You know, I took as many as I could. <laughs> Sanitation truck was barreling down. They must see me over there and, and start to... But isn't that nice if you have a quick project or something that you want to put, uh, you know, a, a draw pull on? And this is the way you just take them off. You screw them off. They screw. They have a screw on the inside. This was on the inside. I don't think it belonged on the inside. But this was on the inside like this. And that's how it screwed through the drawer. So uh, you could do it without tools if you just put your finger there and screw that off. So if ever you see a dresser thrown out, grab the pulls. These things run, they're pretty expensive, especially a nice one like that, huh? Next up, my buddy Chris Logan from Ontario, Canada. Uh, he, he has a really cool summer. He bought an, uh, an old church and he has it as a summer home that he uses. Uh, it's about five hours from where he lives. And really cool uh, the fact that imagine using a, an old church and he has it set up as a nice summer home he got that up there and but he was uh, uh scouting around he happened to find a uh a sale that he went to a, and uh a flea market type and and he saw this uh uh, master padlock a new old stock 44 and he knows I, I collect master and uh look at the great uh graphics on this box and stuff and again he picked this up there you know this was up in canada so it went all the way up there and then back down again but this is a new old stock number 44 i like the new old stock and uh what's interesting about this one here you could see this was the uh you know, the clad type that they would put together and stamp together, had the rivets, and uh, it's nice. It's a beautiful lock. It still works perfect. Uh, these keys are actually hard to get today, but uh, you can see how this will work. Just turn it, 
picks right up. They're actually more difficult to pick than they would you would think. And um, so what I want to do is I'm going to do a real quick cleanup on here. We're not going to use the wire brush. We're going to put any scratches, but it does get a little bit of grunge on there from sitting around, even though it is a brand new lock. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up with a little Scotch-Brite, lubricate it, and then put it back for the next time we might need to use. And here we go. We're calling this project done. You can see here we uh, cleaned up the case. Everything looks good. Got rid of that grunge that was on there. Uh, polished it out a little bit. And uh, you can see everything jumps out now. This is the way the lock would have looked. Just freshly produced. And again, we lubricated with 50-50 acetone transmission fluid. And it just as smooth as can be. You hear that? just smooth closing and opening nice beautiful little lock i always like these little uh riveted locks they just have a, a look to them don't they anyway chris thanks so much for that uh we'll put these back and in, into the collection okay next up went to a, a flea market picked up a couple of few dollar items except for this one this was expensive this williams i paid 15 dollars for this pipe wrench but you know why right jh williams and company original color original paint and aluminium that's right if you guys in australia <laughs> aluminium you don't this thing is light as a feather what a beautiful wrench right and uh so yeah i picked that up and uh and you know the hammer and the you know the two dollar i can't pass the buy for two dollars but this is what i wanted to do today this one here stanley i-beam okay you see the i-beam in there uh, I, I know it's seen better days. I have two of these new old stock. Always loved them. One of my favorite hammers. However, I will not use it because it's new old stock. I don't want to, you know, but now when I see one for $5 that needs to be restored, you know, it's, it's seen some days, but, uh, let's do it. Let's clean this up. You know, you can see here the face is everything looks good. It's, it's rusted. You know, it's been sitting out. Uh, there's nothing broken or chipped on here. Just needs to be done up the way we do it. The handle looks a little bit old and aged, you know, but I, I like these. I always like this, this, uh, uh, acrylic hammer covering over the I-beam inside. So let's work on that and see what now, we can do. Now, a lot of people ask, they say, when do you know to put something in vinegar or evapor rust? And when do, you know, how do you decide? Well, if a tool has a, a a complex mechanism that's hard to get in or get to, uh, like inside a pocket, like for example, you know, like when I did these clippers, you know, sometimes in here it's a little hard to get in, especially if it's encased in here and you can't take the whole thing apart. Um, then sometimes you, you would put it in an evapor rust, but or or vinegar or something. But in this case here, we can get to everything here, you know. Uh, the only thing is going to be a little difficult there, but we'll get in there with the Dremel. So there's no sense in, you know, I want to get this done. I don't want to have to wait. Uh, so I'll be able to get everything with uh, the wire brush and the grinder. But the main thing is because this is acrylic, we have to wrap this with the aluminum can so that we make sure we do not damage this with the wire brush or anything that we do. So we'll now do to wrap now. it, we take a piece of aluminum can like this here, put a piece of tape on one side then we're going to put this up flush against the edge here, okay? And we're going to put the tape around the edge like that first. And then we're going to pull this hard around the, the, the handle and pull it hard so that this way it stays very close to that, uh, to the head of the hammer without touching it. And uh, we'll, you know, this one curves in a little bit, but then we'll put a piece of tape around it and that's what will stop this from getting back. It should look like this when you're finished. And again, you could press this down a little bit to get on that side in here, but you won't damage the acrylic underneath. The wire brush will not go through the uh, aluminum. Okay, here's can. our post wire brush evaluation. Now, you don't have to go through the wire brush step because you do it with the flap sand, but I do it just to see what kind of condition. We do have some pitting. You see the pitting? You see, we got the casting. I, I still got to get in there with the Dremel. Uh, I can't use that on my, but you can see we got all around the edges here because you can't get in that edge with anything else. But I'm going to leave this on for the flap disc. And you can see we got to keep all these facets, you know. So I don't see any cracks. I don't see any names we have to keep, which is good. You can't touch any of this. This, this is like an epoxy and it will craze, you know, get that uh, marking on there. So we're, we're doing good so far. 
see what the face looks like here not bad but we'll, you know we'll clean this up because I want to make this as a user something I can use I always liked it and we'll get rid of that stupid label Okay, now we finished doing the head as, as much as we're going to do more or less on the head. Everything's coming nice. Now, we took the sticker. This one's inside the plastic, but we took the outside one off over here. We hit it with some uh, uh, lighter fluid. Gets off all that uh, excess. But, you know, there's still micro scratches over here. So we're going to give it a little bit of a sanding, work our way down the grits, a little polish. But here's the key here. You see all the, there's a lot of dirt in there. We're going to take a scrub brush and some goop. And hit this handle to get all that dirt out of the uh, the grooves in there. And uh, it's coming along nicely. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this Stanley I-beam hammer looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. Uh, this one here, you know, I, I don't I have a lot of time to do these, to crank these out. But this came out really good. Let's take a look at the handle first. The handle came out real nice. You know, you know, I took all the dirt off, scrubbed everything out. Again here, polished everything here. You look how nice and clear that looks. Let's take a look at the head here. Uh, we didn't do it to a full mirror finish, but we have it really nice along the sides, the back. Uh, painted all the areas. Look at all the facets and oven baked it on the furnace. You know, you could see how nice that looks, right? All the way around. Did the back too. And uh, just, just just lovely, like look at the face, how it came out and around the top. Now, I still didn't give it its final wax because uh, the paint is still a little tacky. And if you've ever done this before, did you ever, I I'm famous for this, to come up and go, yeah, I wonder if it's dry and then you touch it and you leave that fingerprint there. So now I've learned my lesson. I will not go near this until that, it, it, you gotta let it sit at least a couple days, you know, for enamel paint to, uh, to dry out. But I, I always like this hammer. It's one of my favorites. Uh, let me know what you think. You like this? So in closing, uh, special thanks to Chris for that padlock. Uh, let me know what type of Leatherman that you prefer. And uh, happy birthday to you, all you jawheads out there. Uh, it's birthday to Marine Corps today and uh, tomorrow Veterans Day. So I hope you enjoy it. Fly the flag, will you? Take care now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.